Hey, today on Free Field Training, we're gonna talk about leadership, but it's not gonna be my perspectives on leadership. Those are coming. It's gonna be Anthony Ganji's perspectives on leadership. He runs Tear Talk, and he's also an administrator at a prison. So he knows quite a bit about the difference between management, supervision, and leadership. And it'd be good for you guys to take a listen to him. If you haven't checked out Anthony's channel, there's a link down below to his channel. You should check it out and subscribe if you're thinking about, in any way, shape, or form, getting involved in corrections. How's doing today? It's Anthony Ganji, host of Tear Talk. I want to talk about the need for supervisors to empower their employees. Leaders look to transform their subordinates into potential leaders themselves, as opposed to micromanaging and then having that employee be afraid to make a decision. You know, when you work in corrections, no matter what department you're in, no matter what position you're in, you're going to have to make a decision. And those decisions are going to have consequences. Some are good, some are bad. But at the end of the day, you have to make a decision. And when you're making a decision in the moment, you're making a decision on very limited information and in some cases, very limited resources. As a supervisor, you want to encourage people to make decisions. You want to encourage people to use their discretion because again, you're going to be working in an environment that very few things happen in accordance to policy. So we have to make an effort to bring things back to policy. And that front line is extremely important in regards to maintaining that level of control, but obviously being able to maneuver. As a supervisor, you can't micromanage every individual. You know, you want corrections to kind of run like a machine. You can't stand over every decision that's made because again, you'll be spread too thin. And then at that point, no offense, I don't think you're gonna have any value towards the agency or towards the system or just in regards to completing the mission. But what we need to do is we need to make sure that we transform our subordinates, our employees, into future leaders themselves, which means that we have to give them the power to make decisions and also to hold them responsible for those decisions that they're making. One of the things that we have to do is listen to their justifications when they make a decision. Monday night quarterbacking, it destroys morale. It destroys people's ability to make a decision because then they start getting nervous. They start feeling that they'll be judged for making a decision even though they made that decision in the moment with limited resources. Sometimes the people that come back and judge them have a lot more knowledge as to what happened and they're using that knowledge in a manner that really is unfair to the person who had to go through it in that moment. And when you start becoming hypocritical to those decisions that are being made and you are quick to put paper to pen without really understanding what that front line had to go through, you're going to get a force that's going to be hesitant to make a decision because one thing is, is they feel that if the decision goes south, even though they feel at that moment the decision that they made was justified, that they'll be automatically disciplined and we don't want that. We want to force that is not afraid to make a decision, not afraid to employ some form of discretion. And then you want leaders who listen as to why they had to make that decision. Don't be quick to write them up without really understanding what it was like for them to be in that moment. And the best way to understand that is by talking to the employee. Also, the reason why I'm telling you you have to talk to the employees because you need to have an understanding of what it's like to work that front line. Don't be quick to judge without understanding what it is that they had to do and why they had to do it. I mean, that's key. Also, guys, when we're creating policy, policies change all the time. You know, sometimes new circumstances come about and you're thinking, oh my God, that was, that never happened before. But now that it happened, how do we, you know, make sure that we have a policy just in case that happens again? What do we do? And you create this policy based on the evolution or the lifeblood of the facility. So with that said, sometimes you have these frontline employees that make such a great decision because again, they're living in the moment that you're gonna to have to maybe change policy. So you have to be able to, as a supervisor, understand that policies 
Sometimes they're not written in stone. And if someone can go ahead and justify the need for a change, you need to listen to that person. Because again, if you have these policies that are antiquated and just aren't going with the times, you're putting everybody at risk. You're putting yourself at risk. You're putting the front line at risk. You're putting the inmates at risk. So again, you have to be able to maneuver. And the way that happens is when you have front line who is willing to step up and make a decision. And the way you get front line willing to step up and make a decision is by empowering them to make a decision. By transforming them to be potential leaders. Guys, you got to remember something. When you want people to become leaders, leaders make decisions. Leaders make decisions. So if leaders make decisions, you have to do whatever you can why that person's at the front line to empower them to make a decision. Empower them. Say, listen, this is what's going on. What are you going to do? Sometimes we used to train our employees on these what-if situations. I love that idea that Russ mentioned. You know, if you're a supervisor, ask your employees what-if situations. What if this happened? What if that happened? And see how they think. See what type of decisions that they would make. But at the end of the day, the reason why I wanted to do this video is as a leader, we're looking to make people into future leaders. We're looking to make sure that people are willing to make a decision, are willing to step up regardless of the consequence. And sometimes we're not gonna have that, those type of employees if we're quick to punish without understanding why they had to make that decision. And then you get those that said, that. It, those, micro, those micromanagement people who look to micromanage and just really alleviate any form of responsibility from that front line to make a decision. Micromanaging does not help anyone. Because at the end of the day, as you become a supervisor, you start moving up, you start getting bigger areas of control. You can't micromanage everyone. Sometimes you have to step away and let that employee do what needs to get done. Give them the chance to make a decision. And then if, again, if something goes wrong, give them a chance to justify why that decision had to be made. You don't want a force that's going to freeze. You know, when something hits the fan, they freeze, they're hesitant. You know, and you got to ask yourself, well, why are you freezing? Why are you afraid to make a decision? And they may have to look back at yourself. It's like, well, I never let them make a decision. And when they do, I come at them for it. That's why they're afraid to make a decision. So again, it's about stepping back and empowering your employees and if they come up with questions, before you're quick to give them the answer, ask them. Say, well, what do you think you should do? Because I remember as a front line, one of the best supervisors I ever had was, you came up with him a question, he'd, he'd wait for you to come up with at least an answer. Give him some possible solution. That's the key. Give me a possible solution and I'll tell you how that solution can go. But if you're gonna give me nothing, if you're not gonna give me anything, then I got nothing for you. Give me something, because you're gonna be in a position in corrections where you're gonna have to make a decision, no matter what department you're at, no matter what level you're at. And the thing is, as a, as a leader, you wanna test that decision making. But the key is, when they make that decision, look to hear why they made that decision. Monday night quarterbacking is so unfair. You know, it's great to be able to have the luxury of making a decision without the stress of what's happening in the moment. It's great to do that. But the reality is, we go through a lot of stress when we have to make a decision. You know, and we're, the decision being made is on very, very limited information. We're going with what's at there at that moment. So again, it's great Monday night quarterback and you have more information, but now you're judging the person who may not have had that information. And now what you're going to wind up doing is you're quick to do paper to pen. You're going to have someone next time who is ready to make a decision, not willing to make a decision. And again, we had this on the show before. People that don't make a decision are an extreme threat to the correctional facility. They're more of a threat to people who make a decision. So I just love your thoughts. Have you ever been micromanaged? And why do you think the person micromanaged you? Out of curiosity, what do you look for in a leader? Hi right, guys, so if you haven't, the show Tear Talks for you, brave men and women that work in corrections. So please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell's gonna notify you every time I post a video. Stay safe, love you guys.